Hi, this is an example of what you can do with persistent save data. Let's hit play. Here we have an input box, a load and save text. We have a circle we can move around and a 3D object that's going to be locked to its, the circle's position. So as I move around the circle, the box takes up its position on screen. So the circle moves, the data is saved, the box reads the saved data and positions itself there. Also, we can enter in some text. We can save that text and we can reload that text. Let's see how this is done. Here we have our persistent circle uses the persistent reference component and it's recording its transform position. In this instance we're saving in a bunch of different formats to this file name. So binary, JSON, and CSV. The files are saved to Unity's persistent data path. Here you can see a XML representation of that file, the last position binary format of course is hopefully unreadable you have JSON format and those are the three file types we chose to save you can load back in any format but you only have one so for instance if I want to load player press I didn't use that as one of the save selections so it's giving me a warning so let's put that back to JSON so if I hit play, my circle should return to where it was. And now when I start moving, the box would again begin to follow it. So the position in a mixed format being loaded back as JSON. So for the cube, it has a persistent notification component attached. Now you drag in and add in the reference you want you select the events you want to listen for and they automatically load up the selections that we have so here we we're saving a 3d vector a vector 3 so that's one of the options here so if I was to add for instance another member and let's just make it the tag as a string just so you can see the difference so I also have here where I'm saving and loading the data a string reference we'll get to that string reference later let's remove this tag so now I'm telling the system I want to be notified when data is saved or load from this component and after the save we're gonna position its transform so you can add any for instance we can modify the mesh render these are all static parameters so we use the transform to get a dynamic parameter and we can save any 3D vector and uh, load it back dynamically and we use the position in this case and that's the result without having to write a single line of code so now let's see what happens for the input so the input persists quite a few things the text it, whether it's enabled or disabled and it's inactive but in this case it doesn't use um, you don't choose when to the data is saved it's uh, manual because um, auto is not checked so that being the case you need to save and load the data on your own and that's what the save and load buttons do so when we hit the save button we're going to save the text whether it's enabled and whether it's inactive interactive excuse me and we'll be reading and loading data back in binary format 
So the buttons themselves have a reference to persistent reference and we're going to load and save the data. Now there's a text box in here that shows what data was was saved. So after we save the data, we have a persistent notification here again that's listening for these events. In particular, the text event. The text has been saved event. And that's pretty much all it takes. You set up these parameters, not a line of code required, and you can get some pretty cool things done. Um, one thing I did not mention is that you can choose the file file name or use the one that's given to you so um, it goes without saying that file names need to be unique because every chunk of data is saved within that specific file for that component cool